Hey, it's Papa. It's now time to talk about the biggest bang of all. Uh, and that's when the proto-Africa continent called Gondwana crashed into the proto-North American continent. I think it was called Laurentia. <clears throat> Back during the Allegheny Orogeny, the Allegheny Mountain Building event. And that happened around 300 million years ago. It was a tremendous crash and it resulted, when it was all over, we had a new supercontinent and that supercontinent was called Pangaea. And it lasted uh, until about 150 million years ago, plus or minus. And then it split apart again uh, into the continents to the world configure it, continent configuration in the world that we know today so let's just try to hit the high spots of the of the Allegheny and orogeny uh, it happened over during the Pennsylvanian and Permian time uh, that would be Pennsylvanian time was about um, 330 to 300 million years ago uh, Permian time was 300 million years ago to 250 million years ago. So that's the time frame from the coming together of uh, Gondwana, which is Proto-Africa with North America, which was called Laurasia, or Laurentia, I guess, and uh, the forming of the supercontinent Pangaea. So let's turn around and see what we have here. Okay. All right. <clears throat> a map of the eastern United States. Let's come down a little closer. What's this funny looking black banana? It's a rotten banana. No, no, no. This represents all of the um, geologic terrains that had been um, tacked on and accredi or accredited, as they call it, uh, to the North American continent during the Taconic Orogeny and the Acadian Orogeny. And so let's put them on there. Something like this. They're right there. They've been pushed onto the continent a little bit. Um, and now here comes Africa. Here's a big old Africa. Now according to the geologists, when Africa came, it first hit way up here. Um, just south of, well, maybe right about the tip of New York State. This is New York State here. You see that point? It hit there, and it rotated this way. And as it rotated, it, it began to crash. So you can see that it, the first place it began to crash is up here in the north. And so... As it did crash, it created huge Himalayan-sized mountains along in here, and those mountains were drained by these Amazon-sized uh, river systems. So let's look at a let's look at the Amazon River. Okay, if you picture, this is the uh, huge mountains that the Allegheny Orogeny pushed up. And you've got this massive Amazon River system flowing into a basin. So, so they say that the, the river systems created when Africa crashed were easily as mighty as the Amazon River system. And the cool thing about it, all up in here, um, they, they were very well developed. And all in these Amazon-sized river systems... They developed these peat swamps, huge peat swamps, where um, fern-like trees and ferns and all kind of vegetation developed. Um, and then, but then um, you'd have a you'd have a big swamp area, and then more material would erode down from these huge mountains that were developing and cover this swamp forest. These are swamps just like the Okefenokee Swamp in Georgia. And 
when these river when this river mud covered these these uh giant uh amazon sized swamp forests um, you eventually got coal that was the beginnings of coal and the allegheny underogeny created most of the coal in the world that uh, we have been accessing for several hundred years. So these massive coal swamps were everywhere. Up in this area, since it hit up here first, there was a lot, lot of time for these coal swamp river systems to develop. And that's why Pennsylvania and West Virginia have tremendous coal reserves, the most coal reserves of any of our eastern states. So anyway, uh, Africa's rotating in. Now, were coal swamps forming down here in Georgia? No, not near as much because Africa was further away. And this was, this was part of the Foreland Basin. So instead of coal swamps down here in Georgia, uh, in North Carolina, you had, you had some, but you had mainly um, coastal plains and barrier island uh, formations, barrier dunes. You know, when you go to the beach and you're on the ocean, you're really sitting on a barrier dune. So, and that's why Georgia does not have as much coal as, the, as these central Appalachian states like Pennsylvania West Virginia, uh, Kentucky, and Tennessee to some extent. So here comes our Africa. It's rotating in. Uh, and as it, as it rotated in, it pushed everything that had crashed into the, um, the continent before it pushed it 200 miles across the continent. Something like that. And Africa came, stopped about here. Where is here? Well, sorry. Here is about this point in Georgia. About the about where the Georgia uh, fall line is located. And and so now huge mountains had developed down in here uh much later, kind of late in the game. Uh but tremendous amounts of um Mud and sand were eroded off of these mountains into the basin, this foreland basin that was located here, spread all the way. These, these, these sediments spread all the way across, at least to the Mississippi, and actually they think even far beyond them. Now, another thing that was happening during this same time when Africa was crashing are what they call cyclotherms, and that's a situation where... Um, over millions and millions of years, glaciers form, and that lowers sea, the sea level, and then the glaciers melt, and that raises sea level. And because this was all fairly flat terrain except the mountainous areas, you got these huge inundations of the ocean. And um, when the ocean would rise, that would cover all this over with mud down in here. And what, what coal... The coal that was forming, the, these coal swamps that were down in here, which weren't many, they were covered over by mud from the ocean. And ocean mud has a lot of sulfur in it, so the coal that was formed down here uh, had a lot of sulfur in it, and that makes it a little lower quality than the coal up in near around Pennsylvania, West Virginia, which was uh, formed when the coal swamps were covered over by r freshwater river systems. Um, so you got really high quality coal, low sulfur coal up here. You got high, higher sulfur coal here. Now you may ask the question, there's not much coal in Georgia at all. There was a little bit uh, formed in the uh, Cumberland Plateau. And if you go to the Cumberland Plateau of Georgia, you can go to what was once the Durham, Durham coal mine, um, which um, where they did mine coal in the Cumberland Plateau of Georgia. But there wasn't a lot there. Most of what was there, uh, not near as much coal formed down here. And um, there was more erosion here. Now, why was there more erosion here? Because when Africa finally hit, 
you know, this is the fulcrum up here. And when it finally hit, bam, it's like the hammer coming down. And it really, uh, really folded and faulted all of the, the rocks in here. And so when you have tremendous folding and faulting, you get tremendous erosion. So a lot of the coal that may have been formed was eroded. You might ask, okay, Alabama has a lot of coal. Um, it has um, coal from uh, uh, coal in its Valley and Ridge province and its coastal plan uh, Cumberland Plateau province. How come? Well, that was because most of that coal came from the uh, Ouachita orogeny, which was part of all this, where um, a hunk of other hunk of continent, I don't know what it was, crashed in along the southern southwestern and southern United States and so that provided a bunch of Alabama's coal. Now up here again as the coal was forming and the continent was just crashing um, the coal that formed in the Valley and Ridge provinces up here was pushed th these layers were pushed into synclines and anticlines and so the coal bearing strata were trapped in these synclines and protected from erosion for a long time. Um, down here in Georgia, once again, the Valley and Ridge province was pushed into uh, anticlines and synclines, but the pushing and shoving and faulting was much more severe than up north. So here again, any coal that would have formed in our Georgia Valley and Ridge was would have been eroded away because of the tremendous cracking and smashing of the rocks in these anticlines and synclines and um, that smashing and crashing cracks them, lets the water get in and erosion takes place fairly rapidly. Okay, let's look at another picture of the Allegheny and Rodney. This picture is done by Robert Hatcher, who was a great geologist at the University of Tennessee. Just, I think, a brilliant guy. He's passed on, he's retired and passed on now, but you can see, okay, here's step one, step two, step three, step four. The yellow is Africa or Proto-Africa Gondwana. Um, and you can see it, it crashed in up here, up in here, and it's rotating according to these arrows. And it gets closer and closer. Uh, you can see that it's crashed up, it, up in here, and so you're getting these river systems and coal swamps de developing. Um, and uh, finally, you get down to here, and it's the black spot is, is Georgia. And finally, it hits Georgia. So you can see that rotational. And then down here is some of the rest of it that, that was part of the Wachita Arajani. Now, another thing that I need to tell you about the Allegheny Arajani is that... Um, oh, you can see, again, see this little piece here? It's Florida and South Georgia. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what we call the Sewanee terrain. And it's in South Georgia, um, and it starts about the um, around the fall line of Georgia and extends south. That was part of Africa. And so that's you can see it smashed on here. And that's about as far as the main part of Africa got. But it pushed all the previous um, terrains... Uh, as we were talking about, that had been accredited to the continent. It pushed them 200 miles across the uh, Cambrian rift to drift sequence, the Cambrian, uh, mostly uh, limestone strata, 200 miles across. And so where did it stop? It stopped at... Um, it stopped at the... Hang on, I'll be right back. Ah, sorry about that. It stopped right here. This is the Great Smoky Fault. It has other names, but this is the huge major fault line. And this is this is that Cambrian rift to drift material, um, mostly limestone, which was an ancient sea. And here all this all this was pushed up 200 miles on top of all this 
Cambrian Rift to drift. And so it stopped right here at the, this is Western Blue Ridge. It stopped at the, where the Western Blue Ridge, Great Smoky Fault. After um, Africa crashed, there was tremendous erosion from these Himalaya sized mountains that were located down there, you know, about uh, in Georgia, about where the Suwannee train is uh, near our fall line. And they ran all up the eastern United States. Tremendous quantities of uh, mud and then sand were deposited in this giant low-lying flat coastal plain with these big, huge um, lowland rivers and river swamps that developed. And um, a lot of the material that came from these um, Allegheny Orogeny Mountains went all the way across the United States to the into the western United States they found. Um, I think that's all we need to do to talk about it. Next time, we'll, well, we've talked about our three crashing events. The Allegheny and Rajni is the last one. Next time, we'll talk about the rifting of Pangaea, and I'll tell you where uh, to find the super signs of it. All right, pop out. Oh, wait. Rock buddies, have a great day. I always think about you guys. Uh, so... You're number one with me. All right, pop out.